use a somewhat generic uh, permutation procedure to uh, for the final project. So the permutation of the interaction network. Uh, so here I first set my working directory. So now the the list file uh, is a useful uh, function to check your whether you have all the necessary files there or not. You can also use a pattern to search for the files. Here I'm basically checking whether the geo expression data set uh, under its lock uh, and coefficient of variance based on its lock to transform is there. So I'm going to use one data set uh, called GSC3821. That would be GSC3821. Twenty-one dot Okay, so let's read the file into this. And this, <coughs> this is a transcription profile uh, of a service upon addition of a glucose. So it's a glucose pulse experiment. So there are some other data. I'm going to jump it over. So, so after read uh, all this data, I'm going to make sure. Oops, uh, sorry. The the experiment are in the correct format. So here, uh, 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 CV dot tab file container ORF standard deviation mean and coefficient of variance variation coefficient of variance. Okay. And then I'm going to read into the protein interaction network in pairs. So there, that's a, and then I'm also going to read into the genetic interaction network. And after I read in the genetic interaction network, so the genetic interaction network also have a epsilon standard deviation p value. The epsilon is used to uh, tell whether it's positive or negative interaction. For the positive interaction, I'm going to take epsilon, which is greater than zero. So epsilon is equal to the double deletion mutant uh, minus the product of the two single deletion mutant. That's epsilon. And when the epsilon is positive, and that's called a positive genetic interaction. When it's ne negative, it's called negative genetic interaction. Although the functional mechanism uh, how to interpret that that's actually up to debate but that's what the number shows that's what the uh, Coast Costanzo 2009 paper called so let's use that name so there those are our positive genetic interaction in pairwise format and that's our negative genetic interaction in a pairwise format now I'm going to write a genetic uh, generic function to calculate the the difference of two uh, the value between an interacting pair, that's this function called differ dot value, and uh, it it operate uh, take two parameter when it's uh, the pairs interacting pairs, and then the other one is the what I call in data. The in data must is a data frame contain two column. One column is called ORF. Another column called value, and basically the value is is what the, our permutation try to evaluate. So this is uh, essentially a, gen a generic uh, way to calculate the difference between the <coughs> interacting pairs uh, based on using the value. Uh, now that's but this is calculating for one interacting network. So what? So and we can. If we want to do this for uh, say a thousand permutation, and um, it will be easier if I write a generic permutation function to do this. So here is my attempt to write a generic permutation test function, and I'm going to take in the original interacting pairs, and and also again the in data, in data is supposed to uh, specify the value of each ORF and then the input number of simulation basically specify how many simulation I want to do 
So this kind of a uh, in pair tell do the input. Um, so inside uh, as inside the function, I'm still going to call number of simulation and themes. Uh, that's this is just because I'm lazy. I don't want to change uh, change the previous code. The previous code all use n themes. So so I'm going to set up an empty vector called n themes. That's going to uh, store all my uh, simulated data. Again, I'm going to use the I want to use a sample function to uh, permutate the pair. So those are uh, similar things. Uh, and then basically. Do for each permutation, I sample the long list of ID and take them into a new, repartition them into a two uh, columns. And first half is OF1, second half is OF2, and then merge the two together, that will be a new interaction network. After the permutation, I, I run the different dot value function again, and I do this for number, n number of simulation. Uh, right. So I'm going to r run this section and basically uh, define my uh, permutation function. So in R Studio, you can see the function now is here. I have I now have two function, differ dot value for each uh, to calculate the the delta value between interacting pair in one network, and then call different data value in permutator pair, basically call the second the function in many, in n number of simulation times then looping it over. So <coughs> now let's apply it to protein interaction network. So remember I, I need to call an in data and that in data can only have two columns OIF and value. So now if we look at the C V uh, table. Oops, uh, I need to use a header. CV dot table. Okay, the CV table has actually have four columns, so and the CV actually in the last one. Uh, so I'm basically taking the first column and the fourth column and then rename it as ORF and the value, and that will be then input into. Uh, my generic function called different dot value, and then calculate uh, uh, that's uh, my observed uh, difference of coefficient of uh, variation between interacting pairs, and this number is 0 0.043, kind of small. And then I'm going to simulate 1,000 times. Let's see how it's going to work. Now uh, in R Studio, now you see a red sign. It's called stop. This is kind of a confusing. Not stop doesn't mean it is stop. It's actually a, a icon. If you push it, then it will stop. So once you see that, it shouldn't push. Now so now it's finished. You see that stop sign is gone. So so it's basically now when when the stop sign is gone, that means it's stopped. It's a little confusing, but if you think about it, it's really an icon for you to push, maybe it's it's not that confusing anymore. Alright, so now we have finished the permutation, and that's the histogram of permutating the data CV. So you can actually see, this. my, my observation is 0 0.043, and my histogram is something at the very end, 0 0.044, it looks like I have a small p-value here. And then we basically calculate the p-value by looking for uh, how many of the simulated number are less or equal than my uh, current uh, simulated observation. So after so I have a p-value. Uh, well, if I directly calculated this, I actually got a p-value of zero. But since I only do 1,000, so I only know the p-value is less than one out of the number of simulation. That basically, in his, in this case, is less than one out of a thousand. So I'm going. So basically, I'm saying, if my p-value is zero, I'm going to assign it one out of the the, the number of simulation I have run. So 
here I also write a generic way to, to generate a histogram without, say, adjusting them. So because the histogram is going to take care of the, both the simulated value and my observation, so I'm going to take a minimum of that and then uh, scale it down a little bit so I can get a nice graph. I'm also going to take a maximum of these values and also scale, scale it up also a little bit, 5%. So that way I can have a left margin and a right margin. And then do the histogram and yep, that's the my histogram for the protein interaction network. So those are the observation of delta C V and this is my simulated value. So and <coughs> now likewise we can do this for the positive genetic interaction network and everything now the nice thing about writing a genetic function is here, here everything is more or less the same except uh, my input network are different. Here I'm inputting the positive genetic interaction pairs. And I can also do a, a permutation here. And again you see the stop sign and don't push it. Uh, let it stop by itself. Okay now it's done. So in this case, my uh, simulation uh, observation is 0.053. My simulation is, you see, also goes to 0.03. So I'm not sure what the p-value is going to be. Let's see what the p-value is going to be. OK. Uh, the p-value, let me see what's the p-value here. 0.022. So in this case, the p-value is 0.022. Uh, it's not bad. It's still quite significant. So again, let's see whether the, the generic version of the plotting also going to work. Ah, yeah, not bad. Yeah. And likewise, you can we can do run this uh, for the negative, but I'm going to stop here now.